Welcome to section 14.4. All right, general people, in this lecture, we're going to continue our discussion on MO theory. And we're going to talk about some other things that MO theory does real well and how it explains natural phenomena that we don't see explained through Vesper, Lewis dot structure, or hybridization. So one thing we can take a look at is the interaction between molecules and magnetic fields. So something that is paramagnetic, well, that is going to be something that is going to be attracted to a magnetic field. Now, something that's called diamagnetic, well, that's going to be repelled by a magnetic field. And really, it's going to be slightly repelled by that magnetic field. This is barely noticeable. And most diamagnetic things really don't interact unless it's a very strong magnetic field. So what causes something to be attracted to a magnetic field? Well, it turns out that if you have unpaired electrons, you'll be attracted to a magnetic field. However, if all your electrons are paired up, there's no overall electronic spin. Well, that means your compound is going to be diamagnetic. Let's take a look at the Lewis structure for O2. If you were to draw the Lewis structure for O2, you would have the oxygen double bonded, and you'd have two lone pairs on each one of these oxygens. And it looks like everything is paired up. However, let's go ahead and take a look at the MO diagram of O2. So this was on the last quiz question I gave you. And what you guys can do is fill the molecular orbitals, the sigma, the sigma star, the sigma, the pi, and then finally the pi star. And what you will notice is everything is paired up until we get to the topmost orbitals. And what we will find is two unpaired electrons. So in this case, O2 is paramagnetic. So that means it should interact with a magnetic field. Now, if you were to go ahead and liquefy oxygen, so this is liquid O2, what you can do is you can pour liquid oxygen in between two permanent magnets. And what you will see is that this liquid is magnetic and is going to be suspended in air. So what this shows is molecular orbital theory is doing a better job describing our natural world. It predicted that oxygen would have unpaired electrons and thus be paramagnetic, attracted to a magnetic field. And this is something that we don't see in the Lewis dot structure. Now to shift gears just a little bit, we can also talk about heteronuclear diatomic and what I mean by that is up until now, we've been talking about homonuclear diatomic, meaning I combine a nitrogen with another nitrogen. But what happens when I go ahead and combine nitrogen with a carbon or nitrogen with a boron? How do we change our molecular orbital diagram? Well, our three panel picture changes in a couple of different ways. One thing you have to understand is that if you have a more electronegative element, then its atomic orbitals are going to start lower. So instead of having a symmetric three panel picture, what you're going to do is take the orbitals of the more electronegative atom and lower them just a bit. So the more electropositive element is going to have orbitals that are higher. You're going to go ahead and combine these atomic orbitals to make molecular orbitals. But what's different is that these molecular orbitals are not going to be perfectly symmetric. What you guys will see is that the closer in energy these molecular orbitals are to atomic orbitals, they are going to adopt more character. And what I mean by that is the probability is going to shift towards the orbital it is most like. And this is better illustrated on the next slide. So let's go ahead and say that I make this molecule OF minus. So this is going to be an oxygen atom combined with a fluorine atom. Now fluorine is more electronegative than oxygen. So what you'll see is the 2s orbital of fluorine is lower than the 2s orbital of oxygen. The same is true with the 2p. Fluorine's 2p's are lower than oxygen's 2p's. 
Now I'm going to take these atomic orbitals and make the molecular orbitals in the middle. Now when I combine the molecular orbitals, what you'll see, what you'll see is my bonding orbitals are closer in energy to my fluorine. And what you'll see is that there's more probability for that bonding orbital to be more centered around fluorine than on oxygen. And conversely, the antibonding orbital, what you'll see is there's, there's greater probability or greater density of this molecular orbital on oxygen than there is on fluorine. Because again, the antibonding orbital is higher in energy, and so it's going to have more character of the more electropositive atom. You guys will go ahead and see that this is reflected in our p orbitals. Now, what I should mention is when I talked about molecular orbital diagrams, I told you that there were two diagrams, one for lithium through nitrogen and the other for the rest of the periodic table. If your atom is just made out of elements of lithium through nitrogen, then you can use that diagram. If it's made of atoms that, you, that are oxygen and beyond, you can use that other diagram. So if there's a mix, so something like I'm combining carbon with fluorine that use two different diagrams, then I'm gonna have to tell you which diagram to use. So let's go ahead and try this out. I want you guys to tell me what the bond order of NO is. So nitrogen and oxygen use two different diagrams, and I will say that this molecule uses oxygen's diagram. So when you draw your molecular orbital, remember the order and follow that of oxygen. So what I want you to tell me is, is tell me the bond order of NO, but what I also want you to do is try to draw the relative energy of the atomic orbitals in relation to one another. All right, let's go ahead and draw the diagram for NO. So I'm gonna start out with my nitrogen and nitrogen has the valence orbitals 2p and 2s. And I'm gonna go ahead and fill in my valence electrons, which it has five of. I'm gonna do the same for oxygen. Now oxygen is more electronegative. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw the 2p valence electrons slightly lower than the 2p of nitrogen. And the same is gonna be true for the 2s. I'm gonna go ahead and show the six valence electrons of oxygen. And now I'm ready to take these atomic orbitals and combine them to make my molecular orbitals. So my two S's are gonna combine constructively and destructively. I'm gonna do the same for my 2P. Now I told you that this is gonna use oxygen's diagram. So what I'm gonna have is I'm gonna have my sigma, my pi, my pi star, and my sigma star. And so I can put my designations on here. This is gonna be sigma 2s, sigma star 2s, sigma 2p, pi 2p, pi star 2p, sigma star 2p. Now I have 11 electrons to place in these molecular orbitals. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, then pair, nine, 10, and 11. So I can go ahead and calculate my bond order. What I can see is that I have eight bonding electrons, three anti-bonding electrons, and I'm gonna divide that by two. So I get a bond order of 2.5. Now let's go ahead and see the beauty of MO theory. So the first thing you would notice is NO is an odd electron system. Lewis dot structure does a poor job of handling odd electron species. You can try drawing the Lewis dot structure as something like this, where the nitrogen has an incomplete octet. Now, according to Lewis dot theory, nitrogen should always have a complete octet. So that's why it has a hard job of describing this molecule. But if we take a look at our MO theory, what we can say is that the bond between nitrogen and oxygen is a 2.5 bond. 
And that's what we experimentally find, not this double bond that this bad Lewis dot structure shows us. What's more is we can see where that lone electron or unpaired electron is. We see that the unpaired electron is in an antibonding orbital. Now remember, antibonding orbitals are more centered or have higher probability towards the more electropositive or the less electronegative atom. So this unpaired electron is, is more likely to be found on the nitrogen than the oxygen. And this is what we experimentally see. So these are the insights that MO theory brings to us. Well, gentle people, I hope that made sense and remember to stay safe.